Good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 Economic Recession and Preparation Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on this Monday, August 24th, 2020. Today, the stock market surged over 300 points on news that tech stocks will continue to dominate and grow and on basically just hopeful optimism. But despite that, CNBC.com reported this morning that economists see a chance of a double dip recession. Now, this was a survey provided by the NABE, the National Association of Economists, and over 80 percent of economists surveyed said they see a one in four chance of a double dip recession. Hmm. Little do they know that it is going to be a depression and not a recession. The survey also gave Congress a mixed review when considering its fiscal stimulus effort. But the Fed got the best grade since 2007 for its monetary policy response. I assume that has a lot to do with the stimulus and Chairman Jerome Powell saying that he will do whatever it takes, print up whatever it takes to continue the Ponzi scheme going on the stock market. Well, there is a disconnect between the stock market and Main Street that most Americans know and feel. The pundits on TV and the media and the politicians continue to grab more and more money away from the middle class and away from poor Americans to siphon in their coffers before the storm hits, the financial storm of next year, when all the cards come tumbling down after the election. Now, the article also notes the economists are concerned about the increasing amount of U.S. debt, with 88 percent at least, quote, somewhat concerned and 22 percent are very concerned and rightfully so. Did you know that we have over twenty six point eight trillion dollars in the U in the United States and unfunded, not including unfunded liabilities? Did you know that we have the most debt in the world, but yet we produce the most we produce the less uh, goods and services in the world out of our 330 million people, men, women, children that we have in this country. And so it's only fitting that most nearly 60 percent expect that we will be in a double dip recession by the end of 2021. Now, we know that we're going to be into a depression. Those of you who have been following my channel, we know that the depression is coming. We're just in the beginning innings, the beginning stages of it right now. And that's the reason why the stock market is surging. And that's the reason why everything else is inflating, hyperinflating, because we're going into a depression. And the same thing happened back in, in the 1960s. The same thing happened back when we had a Great Depression. Let's take a look at the Great Depression here. I want to tell you some things here. And this is why the Great Depression is imminent upon us. And there's such a disconnect between the stock market and Main Street. Not only are the sickness infections from this coronavirus on the rise across the U.S. and yay across the world, but there is civil unrest that is rising across the world in all kinds of countries, from Chile to Venezuela to Turkey to Hong Kong. Remember those, the protesters in China? A lot of people don't focus on that, but that's still ongoing uh, all over the world and right here in the homeland. And this is going to be absolutely crucial. The civil unrest is not just due to the Black Lives Matter. The civil unrest is due to people losing 60 million people who are unemployed, who have nothing better to do in the streets but to roam the streets. And this economic condition that's going to create it from inadequate housing, from housing that's overinflated. Did you know the average price of a U.S. home is now top $330,000, while the average income um, of per capita income of a person working Bring home pay, it's only forty thousand dollars, thirty five to forty thousand dollars. They cannot afford the housing. We cannot afford the housing. And so unemployment numbers are at eleven point five percent, even as the stock market continues to soar toward that all important thirty thousand mark. Now mind you, Venezuela stock market went to fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand points, excuse me, while they were in a financial crisis. But this is a global financial crisis. This is going to be totally different. Depression. A depression is not a period of uninterrupted economic contraction, says a Times.com report. There can be periods of temporary progress. Oh, yeah. 
See, the Great Depression of the 1930s began with the stock market crash of October 1929. We know it as that Black Tuesday, right? And it continued until World War II provided, you know, us the basis with growth in terms of manufacturing production. But in the 1930s, there was little moments of expansion. There was one from, there was, it included two drops, one from 1929 to 1933 and one from 1937 to May 1937 into 1938. But as in the 1930s, we're likely to see moments or periods of flashes of expansions. But that's just a false thing. That's just a dead cat bounce, as they call it. You see, with the growing fears and the growing civil unrest, in addition to the political dysfunction that we're seeing, just like we saw in the 60s and in the 1930s, we're seeing that right now. OK, now, also, I want you to think, imagine that there's no consensus among the de, uh, Democrats and Republicans, regardless of who's in office. The only consensus they have now is to continue to have the pad their pockets full of multimillion dollars, because remember, a lot of the politicians are on these boards of these medical companies uh, for the coronavirus vaccine. And so they're looking to pad their pockets one last time. Nancy Pelosi is looking to pad her pocket one last time with a bunch of millions of dollars before this whole system becomes tumbling down on top of everyone. And because it's a global depression, it's going to start with the United States. And the United States and the impact of this coronavirus will cut deeper than any recession in our living memories. Most people alive have not lived through a Great Depression. I know I have not. And so this is going to be absolutely brutal because... Not only we have 60 million people unemployed, the highest level since the Great Depression, but we have businesses and industries that are closing down that are never going to recover. Airlines are going to take 5, 10 years to recover. Cruise lines, transportation, shipping lines are going to take 5 to 10 years minimum to recover. And that's not counting if we don't get this sickness virus under control. And you see, it's not the sickness virus that we need a prescription for. We need a prescription for the sick economy, my friends. That's what they should be fixing. But instead, they're putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot room, this sick economy. And they're trying to give you the false hope that they have this vaccine for the sickness. And we can't even cure the economy. So we can't un cure the deeper underlying problem. We're not going to cure the problem right in front of us which is this sick economy. Now, the depression will last at least 11 to 12 years. And during that time, central banks, including the United States Federal Reserve, is going to print up massive amounts of money, creating massive inflation. This liquidity support may appear to be helpful, but in the end, it's going to be the death sentence for the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar index right now closed today at like $93.10. It is falling rapidly. That means that our purchasing power is falling rapidly. And that's why I preach to everyone here and to myself to continue to prepare. Because once the dollar goes bust, that means that is the start of the, well, the depression's already here, but that's the start of the collapse in the United States in terms of purchasing power. People are going to be on the streets. It's going to be really, really bad. Um, housing, the next bubble to crash, that bubble will be crashing in November. Late October, November, housing, all this fake optimism about people buying houses and all the things that the media posts, that's going to be the last bubble to fall. When people are on the street and when they're hungry, as you know, food shortages are still continuing in many parts of the country for certain products that they have a stamp in the grocery store. You go in there and say, look, we have a production trouble. They put, a, they put a sign up saying this item is no longer available. We'll let you know when it's available. Well, that's going to increase. Remember, we haven't felt the effects of the Midwest, the retro crops, all the corn crops in Iowa and, 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 and uh, that were destroyed as a result. All that food has yet to come in. But by next year, the first quarter, we're going to see the, de the devastation caused by the mismanaged uh and the stealing and the greed of funds by the top upper one percent if you think the black lives matter uh crowd and riots were bad if you think the riots 
in Detroit and Baltimore and in DC and all of these other cities were bad. Just wait until you see the economic ra revolution that's going to take place in America once the middle class and others realize that their 401k and pensions and social security is not going to be there. And the millennials realize that they have nothing to work for and that their uh, so-called technological wealth has been stolen from them and given away overseas to China where they make iPhones for $20 and $50 and sell it over here for $1,250, you know that there is something wrong. And that is going to be the breaking point, folks. Not since World War II have we seen this much worldwide chaos. And the bad part about it is, is that we don't have a second stimulus check at all. We're not going to receive a stimulus check. Many people did not get the first stimulus check. So what is going to pull us out of the greatest depression that the world has ever seen? Uh, what is the good news that the stock market is bragging about? Uh, that the Federal Reserve is printing up more money, devaluing our currency? Now, this is something to realize is that when Congress makes a stimulus bill, it is for their benefit. They call it pork rolling. Look it up. A pork rolling bill, meaning that the congressman and congresswoman get in there and they say, what in what is in this stimulus bill for me and my state and for my family? They do not care about the average American. And that's the problem. That's why they get basically, if you're a congressman or a congresswoman, you have a lifetime appointment in there and you get reelected because the, the corporations tell Nancy Pelosi, say, hey, we're going to give you this much amount of money if you pass this bill or if we do this and she says hey sure who's going to turn down free paper money but it's just paper my friends in the end the the real currency that's going to matter to us is going to be food water medicine gold silver cryptos land that is going to be the real currency and so i implore you to continue doing what you're doing you're on the right track don't get fooled by the sideshow about the stock market going to twenty eight thousand to twenty nine thousand. that's what it's supposed to do that's for the top upper 1% of America. That's not for you and I. And so you and I know that in the streets, there's going to be absolute chaos. That is coming. This is coming to America. Absolute chaos. And we must be prepared. And along with security as well, too. Because as you can see, things can get very out of hand. And the police are going to be overwhelmed, even in these small towns. Because they cannot handle, they're not going to be able to handle the amount of, of distrust when reality finally sets into America. Get prepared, stay prepared, be blessed everyone, and I'll talk to you soon tomorrow.